Hi guys, welcome back to SHK Excel World. I'm Salim Yadav, and I was away from YouTube for almost a month. So the reason was that I was working on a brand new course on a topic which is financial modeling with SHK Excel World. So you may term this as the first course which any person who wants to pursue the financial modeling career and wants to know as to where the one person should start from. So this is the course. So in this course, we are going to cover almost all the aspects of financial modeling, starting with the basics, the standards, or the best practices. So where to find these standards? Just like standards for accounting. So to the extent I know and I have explored is that there is one standard setting body which is FAST. So this is not a sponsored video from FAST, just for knowledge purposes. So FAST is an organization which sets standards and there are so many signatories to the FAST organization. And there are other number of organizations which not only provide training on financial modeling, but also uh, publish certain best practice notes periodically. So if you know of any other standard setting body, then please let me know in the comments. So don't forget to subscribe to SHK Excel World and also click the bell icon so that you can follow all of this course till the end. Let us go to our computer screen and see what the standard says. So guys, this is the financial model which we are using today and you can download this file from the link given below in the description. And this is just a basic financial model just to tell you about the standards. So the basic thing for setting any standard for financial modeling is that there are limitations of the tool which uh, we are using for financial modeling like Microsoft Excel and we have talked about those limitations many a times in our videos. So there are certain strengths and weaknesses of the tool because of which we need to follow a certain way, do work in a certain way uh, in a particular scenario so that if any user who reads the financial model for the first time can understand as to what it is saying. So we'll talk about these particular way of working in future videos but for the time being we will talk about only four basic principles. The first one being flexibility. So your financial model should be flexible enough to cater for your current scenario needs. Let's say that you have this financial model and you have two scenarios to work with. So it should be easy for the user just to go to the option and select one. So you just select one and your results change. And you should not ask the user to go into the formulas and change the formulas so that it can get the new results for a different scenario. So this is one aspect. But flexibility means that uh, the financial model should be good enough to cater for any future needs. So let's say that if I want to add another scenario into it, it should be fairly easy for the user just to add in the new uh, criteria. Just like this, you can see that currently it has only three options and I will add in the fourth one, option four, and just write in a few numbers. So these are just hypothetical numbers, does not mean anything. And here I will see that there is a fourth one option coming up and the results change. So it does not mean that it should cater for each and everything of all the industries. No, this is not what it means. It should be flexible enough to cater for understandable future needs like the user may want to increase the tenure of the financial model. So the tenure should change easily and all the formulas should take up the figures. So we will later on uh, understand and I will teach you as to how I have accounted for all of these flexibilities. So the second element is that your financial model should be appropriate. So by appropriate, we mean that it should talk about the industry for which the financial model is being prepared for. Like if we are talking about the shoe industry. So the financial model should realistically 
take the assumptions of the increase in prices the demand in the market uh, the past trends so it should not be something which is alien to that particular industry for example if a particular business is exempt from tax and you unnecessarily build in the tax element in your financial model so that means nothing you are just going into nitty gritties just trying to ensure that your financial model is precise for each and every business aspect so this is not the case it should be appropriate for the business needs now the third element comes which is that your financial model should be structured in a particular way so this is the practical preparation of the financial model by structured it means that the color coding should be one and followed throughout your financial model whether it is the color coding of the cells or the sheets or the set of sheets secondly it should talk about and have a basic set of sheets like uh, just generally a financial model has a separate dashboard it has a separate sheet for assumptions separate sheet for inputting data it has a separate sheet for financial statements for separate one for debt working separate one for revenue flows and so on so there is a basic set of sheets for one financial model so you should not do it like that there is one sheet and all of the elements are coming up in that sheet so this is not how it is done so we know that all of the sheets in a financial model are pages of that financial model printed pages and then each set of working like this one the revenue working the quantity the production these are paragraphs and all of these lines these are the lines in that paragraph and each cell is a word so this is a particular structure of a financial model so you can see that the color coding of all of these elements are done in a particular way so this is one page which is the gross revenue then we have uh, the paragraphs which is in different color so these are defined and distributed into groups and the fifth and sixth row of each sheet has the year end or the year number so the last element is transparent your financial model should be transparent and it should use simple and short formulas and if there are complex calculations you should break those calculations into different steps let me demonstrate this one for you guys so this is uh, revenue working for different products there are different elements like the price increase each year then we have the prices so on the basis of this uh, element the prices for future are being defined otherwise we could have uh, embedded this price increase percentage into this formula so now this is transparent i can see that now it is this much percentage of increase and i can just uh, out of financial model i can check whether the increase is accurate or not and then there is also an increase of the production of the quantity so this is also separately accounted for as to in uh, as to which year has the increase and which year follows the last one and then we have the quantity based on the increase percentage and then finally we are working the revenue otherwise we could have embedded all of these elements into one particular big formula a complex formula which is not required so you should use simple small formulas and break up your complex calculations into different steps so that the user can easily follow all of those elements and work out the figure and check whether it is accurate or not i hope you have understood and know these standards for the first time and this was the same scenario for me when i first came to know about the standard setting body and the basic principles so uh, stay tuned for future video in which we will talk about how to work in a particular scenario and then later on definitely we will uh, start preparing the financial model from scratch so do share this video with all of your friends who are interested in learning the financial modeling and that to on a standard level